think we should have at least an eight-layer cake. That'll look perfect on top. Day. Can you believe it? No. Have you ever been so happy about anything in your entire life? That is a question to which the answer should be an immediate no. No. All right. Good. That's the right answer. Now get out of here. Huh? What? Oh, what did I say? I'm sorry. You, you were angry at me? Did I say something wrong? Did you, did you find out? No, about that no, time? Keith. I... My dressmaker is coming over and... Well, it's bad luck for the groom to see the bride's dress before the wedding. That's an idiotic superstition. What difference does it make if I see your dress? I mean, last night I saw your... Superstitious or not, Keith, we can't afford to have any bad luck. Now, here. <laughs> Julia, this insecurity is totally irrational. Your sensitivity is very reassuring. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Julia, but I can't believe that you'd be that upset because Victoria is going to the wedding. You're not still threatened by her, are you? Julia, I love you. And Samantha, you must know that. I do know that, Mason. But I also know that you don't want to make a commitment for whatever reason, and... I can't help it, but it hurts. Slow down. Oh, I can't. You don't know what it's like to have a dream, to see all these things in your head believing they don't exist, that they're too incredibly wonderful to exist, and then to find out that they do. I mean, this is beautiful. I wish you could understand. Baby, I do. I feel the same way. I'm so glad. Wanna check out the inside? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay, no fair! <laughs> oh, it's perfect. The grounds are so beautiful, and now this, this is unbelievable. This, uh, I don't, this place just gets better and better. Oh. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Fielding Cole, the manager of the inn. Hello. Uh, how can I be of service to you? Well, Mr. Cole, um, <laughs> we'd like to be married here. Well, of course you would. I should have recognized it in your eyes. Welcome to Pebble Creek. Time you need somebody to look after Leo, don't call me. Uh huh. <laughs> what's, the, what's the problem? You think after all the times that I've looked after Leo, that she would just this once, she would babysit Carrie, just once. That's all. That's all I ask. Well, why does Rita need a babysitter? Because I'm taking her up to Monterey to cruise in Eaton's wedding. That's why. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's great. Maybe, maybe I'll try one more guilt trip on this one. Yeah, I mean it's the least you could do. You mean you took care of her, her kids? You should take care of Carrie. She don't have kids. Well, who's Leo? Boa constricted, nine feet long, very sensitive, loves to cuddle. Uh, listen, Pearl, why don't you try something else? Good idea. You know something? There is nobody in this town that cares for Carrie more than you do. Nobody. Uh, yeah. Now, listen, uh, I'd love to help you out, but any other time, you know, because I want to go to the wedding. Are you invited? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it was kind of a surprise to me, too, but I think it's because of Haley, you know? She's pretty close to the cap wells and crews and eating. I wasn't going to go at first, but then I thought about it, and it's going to be good for me to get out and do this kind of thing again, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's great. we will be happy to know that you're, uh, you're going up there, too. How can you say that I haven't made a commitment? I'm living here. We're raising a daughter together. 
I can't believe I'm a liberated woman and I'm saying this, but that is not the same thing as being married. I can't believe that a piece of paper makes that much difference. It's not the paper, Mason. You know that. You told me that you wanted to marry me as soon as you could, so you can't be surprised at me expecting that to happen. Yes, I can. I keep thinking about another piece of paper that we signed when you were trying to have the child on your own. The father was not to have anything to do with raising the child. You were totally committed to not being committed to a man. That's not fair. It doesn't count. I wasn't in love with you then. Well, if that particular contract between us can be so easily invalidated, why should I think that a marriage certificate is going to be any more significant to you? Julia, I love you. Are you going to believe those words any more just because we're bound by law? Yes. No, I don't know. Well, you certainly covered your bases that time. If you're going to argue with me like a lawyer, it's not going to do any good. I won't be a, any match for you because I'm not using my intellect and my logic now. I'm just telling you how I feel. I can't help wondering if this sudden urge to matrimony hasn't been exacerbated by Cruz and Eden's upcoming wedding. Of course it has. I see how happy they are. Mason, this is something that I thought about and hoped for, even when there wasn't any hope for it. We had all these obstacles in the way, and now we don't have any obstacles. And you're living with me. And I do believe that you love me. But I don't believe that we're ever going to get married. I just need to take it one step at a time. Well, then tell me how many steps you're going to take, because the way I see it, you walked in here and you were very careful to leave the door open, just in case you wanted to make a quick getaway. Then you want that door slammed shut. Sounds a little like a prison. If that's what you think, then we have a big, big problem. And if that's what you think, I don't blame you for wanting to back out. I'm not backing out of anything. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you? Or is it just a bunch of emotional claptrap to you? I understand that it's very important to you. I'm sorry, Julia. I'm not sure if what I'm saying is logical or reasonable. But it is how I feel. I can't very well argue that, can I? I just said it. I'm sorry. I need more time. Maybe it's because the divorce to Victoria is barely final. Maybe I'm still recovering from that. Would you accept that? I guess I have to. I love you. You do know that. I love you, too. And maybe that's enough for now. But I don't know. Now, oh, here, this meadow would be the ideal spot for the ceremony. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's nice. Well, where's this? Well, that's not far from the main house, uh, near the ocean cliffs. Mm. Perhaps Ms. Capwell and myself could stroll the grounds on our own before we decide on a, on a location? Well, say, that's a first-rate idea. Yes, I'm sure that you two will uh, know the minute you see the place that that's the right spot for the wedding. Great. <laughs> oh, thank you, that's Mr. Coe. Oh, uh, Helmut, I'd like you to meet uh, Mr. Castillo and Miss Capwell. They're going to be married on our grounds. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you very thank much. You very Helmut's in charge of our stables. He keeps everything in top form. Well, if the two of you would care to go riding, I'd be more than happy to accommodate you. Oh, I'd love to. We'll look forward to it, Helmut. Thank you. See you then. Mother said the horseback riding here was spectacular. Great. How, how long have you been working here, Mr. Coe? Oh, about 35 very happy years. I'm, uh, I'm extremely proud of the inn. Oh, I can tell you are. My mother and my father came here many years ago, probably about 27 years ago. Oh? Capwell. Are C.C. and Sophia Capwell your parents? I can't believe you would remember. <laughs> How could I forget such an attractive young couple and, and so much in love? <laughs> I only hope that uh, you, Mr. Castillo, are going to be just as happy as your parents were. You can count on that. I think before we stroll the grounds, we might as well go ahead and book this place. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll get the calendar, and I'm sure that we can find an open date sometime in uh, June or July. Oh, oh, June or July? Mm -hmm. uh, no, maybe if we didn't make ourselves clear, we couldn't possibly wait that long. I, 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 you see, this place is such a, a tradition that, that we are sometimes booked years in advance. Uh, oh. What, uh, 
What date did you have in mind? Well, actually, we wanted to be married a w next Friday. Oh, oh my. Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid that's quite impossible, no. Oh, no, no it's, uh, you see, we can't possibly book you on such a short... For heaven's sake. Look at that. What, what, what is it? Well, we had a large party coming in here that day, booking the whole hotel. And, well, according to this notation by my secretary, they canceled about an hour ago. Well, that's, uh, that's great. That's, that's wonderful. Then, then it's ours. Well, it certainly is, Mr. Castillo. Oh! Well, that's the first time that we've had a major cancellation like that in, in almost 20 years. Well, you know, I think the gods are working on your side. I'll go make the reservations at once. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a stunt you pulled at uh, Cruz's bachelor party. What? Putting Gina in the cake, remember? I mean, I hope you don't try and pull something like that at his wedding. Don't mention the word wedding. You know, nobody's gonna really appreciate it. I am it. on the edge myself, about to take the plunge. I am not interested in Cruz and Eden's wedding. So you and Gina are actually getting married, huh? Yes. About to walk down the aisle, tie the knot, trip the light, fantastic, or bite the big one, Jake. <laughs> I know you read a lot of Schopenhauer, and I was hoping maybe you could talk me out of this big boy. Now, why would I do that? Pick a reason. Look, Keith, I know there's a lot of bad feelings in this town bad about feelings. Gina. That's very good. Keep going. But she's always been decent to me. Uh, Haley loved her, and she loved Haley. This isn't what I had in mind. <laughs> Look, if Gina wants to marry you, that's her business. You make it your business to see that she's happy. I picked the one guy in the world that has nothing nasty to say about Gina. I know. Amber, forever Amber. Bambi, you were always gun shy. Brigitte, what you could do with those braids. <laughs> Cheyenne. Keith Timmons, the district attorney. I have spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Yeah, hi. I was, I, I, uh, I'm going to be throwing a bachelor party down here at the lair and I, I, for myself. <laughs> I'm about to take the leap. So I, I, well, I was wondering if you could come down here and, no, not as a business appointment. I thought, you know, as an invitation. Are you crazy? I'm not gonna pay 50 bucks for you, Amber. It was so beautiful. Hmm, yes, I remember making this dress. What happened to it? It was in an accident. Where, in a barnyard? Actually, it was a pigsty, but I don't think we need to talk about that now. I remember you were so excited about marrying Mr. Caffle. What happened? Well, the marriage turned out kind of the same way as the dress. Anyway, I think the dress is wonderful, and I'd like you to make me another one for my wedding. Ah, do you have a groom lined up, or uh, is the dress on standby, just in case? Of course I have a groom. It just so happens I've had several proposals since Cece divorced me. Well, I'm not fond of repeating myself, but since you have your heart set on it, I will duplicate the gown for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll need to take some measurements. You'd be amazed at the pounds people can put on in a year. No, no, no. Actually, it's not necessary. I haven't gained an ounce. The measurements will be the same. Oh, well, it's your wedding. Yes, it is. I'll need the dress ready in a week. Oh, that's totally out of the question. What are you talking about? You made the dress before. You're just doing the same thing. What could take so long? You got a whole week. I'm extremely busy this week. Another wedding. Very large. Very important. You must be able to fit me in. I mean, this wedding is very important to me. Sorry, but I promise I'll do your next wedding. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you do have to admit that you seem to trek down the aisle with a certain amount of regularity. This is going to be my very last wedding. That's why the dress, the day, the whole thing is very important to me. Mrs. Capwell, can I be candid? 
Hey, you can be Alan Funt as long as you'll make the dress. Uh -huh. Well, I do a great many gowns every year, and I'm beginning to recall that working with you on this particular gown was anything but a pleasant experience. So, now that I'm considering it, even if I had the time, I wouldn't want to work with you again. Good day. Oh, well, fine. You know, I wouldn't want to work with you either. I'll just find somebody else to make the dress. Maybe I can get it cleaned. Margo. Oh, Ted, hi. hi. Oh, let me see this. Oh, my sister is really beautiful, isn't she? Yeah, she sure is. Yeah, they look like they're going to have such a romantic wedding. Yeah, well, no one crews in Eden, I'm sure it will be. It's just that they got to find a place where they're going to have it now, though. I'm kidding. This says that it's going to be this Friday. Yeah, well, they're checking out some place off the coast today. Yeah, but don't big weddings like this get planned way far in advance? Well, they should, I guess, but I don't know. Crews in Eden never gone about anything in the usual way, you know? Mm. Well, you know, I'm just really glad to see you as happy as you are. Thanks. <laughs> Is this all because of your sister? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. You know, I mean, Cruz and Eden, they have fought so hard to be together. I think it gives everyone who knows them hope. You know, that they finally made it. Yeah. Are, are your mom and dad both going to the wedding? Yep. And I also think that if they're going to be spending so much time there together, I don't know, maybe they'll kind of realize how crazy it is for them to be apart. Well, I would think that if any wedding, this one would be the one that the romance would definitely be contagious. You know, I, I can't help but be envious of you getting to go. I mean, I've never been to anything this classy. Well, it's going to be a real small wedding. I mean, you know, just for the family and, and a few friends. Oh, sure. I mean, I figured that. Hiya. Hi. Can I join you? Yeah, sure, of course. How you doing? All right, I guess. Did you get all that, that paperwork uh, straightened out for Mel? Yeah, I think I got his uh, affairs in order. I can't believe he's dead. I'm sorry. I know you must miss him. I do. I heard you uh, are going to Cruz and Eden's wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was surprised to be invited, but I still feel very connected to the family. And if they want me to be there, I'm going. Well, I hope it's not too difficult for you. I'm dealing with the family and dealing with the memories and things. I hope it's okay. Well, it probably will be difficult, but if I'm going to stay in Santa Barbara, I have to confront those memories. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get on with my own life. The inn was originally built as a summer estate by the railway magnet uh, Thomas Bartlett. Uh, when his only daughter died, he lost all interest in the place, and it went unused for a long time. Then in the 20s, the Miller family bought it, and... Uh, it's been run as an inn ever since. <laughs> now, over here is our most luxurious suite. It, whenever we have a wedding, the uh, bride and groom always stay in that suite. And well, I'll sh Well, Mr. Cole. Yes? I think that Cruz and I would like to have this room. Well, you, you sure you wouldn't like to uh, see the bridal suite before you make a decision? No. I I'm certain I'd like this room. <laughs> well, as you wish. You up? This is so beautiful. Yeah, this is roughly perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the room that Cruz and I would like to have. Well, I suppose I shouldn't be all that surprised. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are attracted to this room. I know when Cruz and I were looking around, I don't know why, but I was drawn to it. Uh, well, perhaps it has something to do with the fact that... Uh, your mother and father stayed in this very same room all those years ago. So, um, did you talk to the printer? Yes, I sure did. He put a rush on the invitations so we could have them by tomorrow. And I talked to Mr. Cole about the food and the reservations. You know, it's a good thing we're only bringing uh, family and friends up here because this could be a real nightmare. Darling, darling, you know, wait a second, wait a second. You know, Cole we said? don't have to do everything all at once. 
Oh, but Chris, we're getting down with the wire. Well, I know that, and this is probably going to be the last peaceful day that you and I have together after the wedding between your family and my mother and sister. By the time we get back to Santa Barbara, oh, all hell is going to break Mother, I've got to call your mother. No, you don't have to call her, darling. She's probably already making up a list to cover every conceivable contingency. We could get married in Alaska. My mother would be ready. I have a feeling you're getting around to something here. You're catching on. Mm. I think that you and I should relax and enjoy ourselves today. I think you're right. And you want to know something? I don't feel the least bit guilty about doing that. So let me. Tell them about the tower. There was no reason to disturb them with that. If they're planning a wedding, you must tell them. Miss Capwell and Mr. Castillo are obviously very much in love. What purpose would it serve to put a cloud over their wedding? Ah, hello, Theodore. Come on in. Listen, I just heard that Cruz and Eden have definitely decided where they're going to have the wedding. Place called the Pebble Creek Inn. You rushed all the way over here to tell me that? No, I didn't think you'd know. This is the place where Mom and Dad spend a lot of time together. In fact, Mom, I don't know if you've heard about this, she said it was the most wonderful time of their whole marriage. Now, I'm thinking, if they had such a wonderful time there together once before, maybe going there again would kind of, you know, open up their eyes? To what? Do you know what I'm talking about here, Mason? Yeah, Ted, I think I do. And I'm flattered that you came over here. I'm just not sure why you're confiding in me. Ma Mom and Dad, they deserve a second chance, right? Okay, well, they're not going to get the second chance if Pamela somehow finds a way to crash Eden's wedding. Ah, uh, now this visit is beginning to make yeah, sense. Yeah, and you are the only person that's got influence over Pamela. I mean, I know if you wanted to, you could see to it that she's not going to show up to the wedding. Ted, I, I don't think she'd do something like that. She knows how unwelcome she'd be. Even if she did, I don't think it'd make that much difference. It, it makes a lot of difference to Mom and Dad. Ted, look, I know they're both your parents and you care about them. That doesn't necessarily mean they belong together. They belong together. I mean, you know how much they love each other. I know love can change. I know people can change. Commitments aren't necessarily forever. Everything was fine until Pamela came to town and Dad moved out. We don't know that everything was fine, Ted. Just because two people share the same roof doesn't mean they necessarily have to pledge their lives to each other. What can I get you? Coffee, tea, sandwich, juice? Little song, little dance, little salsa in your pants? It's a joke. Guaranteed to break a smile. Little smile, not much you want. I need some advice. Well, you come to the right place. Advice is the specialty of this house. What do you need advice on? Men. Mm, men. It's a little broad. Do you think we can narrow it down a little bit? Mm. Mason. Mason. Well, that advice is going to cost you, babe. You see, you take somebody like Jake or Cruz. These guys are understandable. You can figure them out. But Mason, he's a, he's a revolt and development, babe. <laughs> Say that again. Yeah. I thought things were rosy between you and him. Hmm? He's determined right now to keep everything static. There's no forward motion. Hmm? Forward to what? A bigger commitment. Oh, you mean like a wedding, perhaps? He won't even talk about it. He just shies away from the issue completely. Babe, he's probably not shying away from you. He's just shying away from the whole idea of a commitment, that's all. Well, I know that he has been abandoned by every woman in his life. His mother, she left him when he was a child. He lost Mary. But I won't do that to him. Did you tell him that? He knows that. I've loved him all this time. I raised his child, and I didn't think there was any hope for us being together. How can he doubt it? Mm, I see. So the next logical step, as you see it, is a stroll down the aisle. No, it's not about setting the date. I just think that we should just talk about it, at least. What? No way. I mean, the guy, look at, he just divorced this, what, this actress three weeks ago. We moved in with you and Samantha. Maybe the, that's the only promise he can make right now. Living with someone is not a promise. 
It was very convenient for him to move in after he needed a place to go, you know? This is not the only reason he moved in with you. How do I know that? Mason is so full of excuses. How do I know that he wasn't using me to, to get over this thing? <laughs> Julia! You were way too smart to even believe that. You know that's not true. You're right. I know that's not true. Okay. I can tell this is tough for you. And now, with regards to Mason, well, you know, I always thought he was a little medieval, but, uh... If anybody can make it work with him, you can. What do you mean? Look, at you. you're very smart. You love him a lot. When a person loves somebody as much as you love Mason, you fight for him. That's exactly what you're going to do. You'll fight. Well, this has got to be the spot. I just, I can't imagine any other place I'd rather be married. How can we be so lucky? I don't know. Well, your family will be over there. Carmen, if she's feeling better, and your mother. And my mom and dad can be over there with Ted and Kelly and Mason. And everybody else can sort of group up and gather over there. You will be right here with the minister. And I am going to come down these stairs with okay, my no, wait, 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 white wait, dress. Don't, don't, don't tell me anymore. I, I want to be surprised. Well, we're going to have to rehearse. We've been rehearsing for years. We could mess it up. How could we mess it up? You could trip. I could trip. You could be waiting in the wrong spot. I could come down the wrong aisle. A lot of things could go wrong. I think the only thing that could possibly go wrong now is that if I uh, forgot to show up, then what are the chances of that happening? One chance in a billion. <laughs> you know what I wish? She has a wish left? I thought they'd all come true. Just one. I wish that we could freeze this moment. Just you and me, together in this beautiful spot. Just right here in each other's arms. Well, I'm not sure we could manage that, but we could take the memory of it with us wherever we go. I'll never forget this place. this moment. This in your dream too? No, it's uh, something different. It's I know. It's Mama and Daddy at home in the in the family picture album. There's a picture of Mama and Daddy. And they're in the stable. D Daddy had his arm around Mama, and they look so much in love and so happy. Well, we're the ones that are here now, and uh, we're going to enjoy this day. Remember? Yeah, I remember. I just don't understand why they can't be happy again. You know, I've been thinking a lot about them coming up here. Mm -hmm. Maybe something could happen, that they'd be here, feel all those wonderful memories again. Kept hoping that maybe this place, maybe... Yeah, yeah I, I know, but... it's not something we can count on. I know. But if Mom and Daddy could get together again, it would be the best wedding present I could ever hope for. So, you know, I was reading about that Capwell wedding in the paper. You must really be looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to Ted. He said it's all set. It's going to be someplace up the coast. You know, it's going to be great to get away for a couple of days. You know, I've been to weddings, but never a wedding like that. Yeah, neither have I. It's going to be the social event of the season. Yeah, yeah, I mean, knowing the Capitals are not going to miss a trick. Oh, honey, you know, all the guys will be wearing their tuxes, and, oh, your date will probably be wearing something formal and gorgeous. You know, it's just that I don't have a date. You're kidding. You're kidding! You're going to go to this by yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I was planning on it. But, you know, maybe, maybe it's not such a good idea. Maybe I should take anger. 
Inger. Who's Inger? Inger, you know her. She's the uh, woman that comes in at night and cleans up the place. <laughs> that woman is 60 years old. Yeah, I know, but she's a sweetheart, you know? And she'd probably have a great time. You know, then again, I got this lady that lives next door to me. She's 75, but she's a great dancer, you know? Well, who do you think I should take? Okay, you're pulling my leg, right? <laughs> Jake Morton. <laughs> Listen, I can't help but get the feeling that you'd like to go to the wedding. Yeah. I'd love to go, but I don't know the cap well, so... Yeah. Well, seeing that uh, Inger's nowhere to be found, how'd you like to go with me? Are you still joking? Nope. I mean it. We'd have fun, don't you think? You're kidding. Oh, I'd love to go. Oh, Jake, thank you so much. I would love to go. Great. This is great. So now I just have to find something to wear. Marva, how are the hors d'oeuvres coming? Oh, they're coming along great. Um, I may have to break open another bag of cheese balls if it won't break your budget. Break open another bag. They're gonna be here any minute. <laughs> Cheyenne, hi! Welcome, you're the first one. My last night as a bachelor. Hey, cool it, dude. I've never seen you before in my life. But why? I mean, the invitations were so wonderful last time. I didn't? Well... I and mean, what bride pays for her own wedding invitations? You don't have to get no... Don't be so snarky about it. I mean, after all, I wasn't supposed to pay for him. You were supposed to send the bill to C.C. Capwell. Well, fine. I'll tell you what. There are other printers in Santa Barbara. I'll use one of them, one who isn't such a jerk. Someone called and said that you were getting married. Again. Well, I wonder who that could have been. Oh, well, she said that she was the mayor's wife. Oh, did she let my little secret out? Oh, well, it was hard believing since she's been in Japan for the past three weeks. On vacation. Oh, well, whoever it was, I'm glad you're here. Yes, well, I must have all the yummy details. But I know it's not going to beat that last wedding of yours. Oh, just wait and see. I'm planning quite an extravaganza. Well, you have amazed me before. I didn't think anyone was capable of bringing a Capwell wedding down to such a base level. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you. I do have some photos here. Oh. Feel free to use any one of them you'd like. Well, uh, I might be able to run one of them on the lower part of page five next month. Next month? No, it would have to be this week. My wedding's on Friday. Oh, precious. <laughs> Out of the question. I'm doing an entire series on Eden Capwell's wedding. I'm afraid I'm going to use all the space that I have. Well, can't you squeeze me in? I mean, after all, I am marrying the district attorney. I mean, people are going to want to see pictures of his new bride. Face facts, dear. Even on a very, very soft news day, your marriage to Keith Timmons might rate a small blurb, maybe even a smaller photo. But this is a Capwell wedding. I mean, you understand. You were a Capwell yourself for about ten minutes. Well, wait, isn't there something I can do? Well, I hear Mason Capwell single again. Short of dumping Keith and marrying Mason, I think that you're out of luck. Ta-ta, precious. <laughs> Look at all that is. I knew you had forgotten me. I didn't recognize you without your black mesh hose on. <laughs> yeah, those were great times. Oh. Keith is throwing some kind of a weird bachelor party for himself. Yeah? Yeah. He invited 12 hookers and 11 canceled. You know, I would think that would be bizarre, except for Keith. <laughs> oh, you know, Jake told me that your sister decided on a place for the wedding. Oh, yeah, it's, it's up the coast. I heard it's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, great. Um, I also thought I should tell you that Jake invited me to be his guest at the wedding. And I remember what you said earlier about it being a family thing and also, I would totally understand if you don't want me to go. Jake invited you? Mm -hmm. well, well, we invited him 
You know, if he wants to take you, I think that's great. Really? I mean, you can tell me the truth. No, I am. I can. I am. Yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you there. My goodness! Don't tell me. Don't tell me my life has been full of insignificant sexual encounters that were rotten substitutes for the real thing. Because when my life flashes before me, all I see are all my experiences with her. All I can see, I mean, they were, they were disgusting, but they were wonderful because we shared something. Besides, we're close. We shared love. We shared love! I love! <laughs> you're still young, and you're still beautiful. So, honey, find the right gal. Because I found the right guy. Gina! Have you got any more of these cheese thingies? Listen. Gina, I'm not in the mood. Listen, please. I have to talk to you. It's very important. I promise I won't take up much of your time. All right, come on in. I need your help. What's the trouble? There's no trouble. I'm marrying Keith. If you don't think that's trouble, there's nothing any rational human being can do for you. I can't help it. I love him. You walked out on such a charming little courtroom ceremony. I thought you'd come to your senses. Well, I couldn't marry him there. I want it to be something special, a real event. I thought everybody in Santa Barbara would be thrilled that we were marrying each other, so we would quit messing up their lives. That's a good point. Yeah, but... No one seems to be paying any attention. Everyone's so consumed by Cruz and Eden's wedding. I, I thought that maybe if I could get at least one lousy cap will show up at the wedding, then Fiona Fig would give us a little press coverage. And I'm the lousy cap will you want to invite? Well, I, I didn't mean it like that. It's just that you and I go back a, a long way. All the way back. <laughs> All right, what the heck, for old time's oh, sake. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get carried away, Gina. When are these nefarious nuptials to take place? This Friday. Well, that's impossible. I can't do it. What do you mean? You just said you'd come. That's when Cruz and Eden are getting married. You mean Eden's marrying Cruz on the very same day? Why? Why? Every time I plan something wonderful in my life, does a cat will have to get in the way and screw it up? It was so wonderful. Yeah. I wish we could stay here forever. Well, I don't think we could manage that, but um, we might be able to stay the night and go back to Santa Barbara tomorrow, if you'd like. Yeah. More memories? Not really. It's just that everywhere I look, I feel that there's a magic about this place. Yeah, well, some of that magic uh, we brought ourselves. Lisa, I've been doing some serious thinking. And I came to the conclusion that I, well, I think that I've been asking too much from you. You've had a lot of losses. And I think that maybe I could be a little more understanding. Maybe a little more patient. And I'm going to try to do that. I've been doing a lot of thinking, too. And I've come to the realization that this situation isn't fair to you and hasn't been for a long time. I think the best thing for me to do is move out. Try to sort things out. I'm not blaming you. It's not your fault. This is my problem. I just need some time to deal with it.
I do love you, Julia. Experience. You're not going to try to back out of our wedding, are you? No, I just, I, sh I, sh I realize that in my heart of hearts, I don't want to chase every skirt in town. What have you been drinking? I, I know what I really want. What my true desire in life is. You're not going to tell me you're gay, are you? I, honey. What? I want to settle down. I want to be your husband. I want to have a little house with a little white picket fence. And I think I'm going to make myself sick. But the thing is, is that I love you. And I'm looking forward to the wedding. Ella, uh, I'm glad you're excited because no one else is. I just spill my guts out to you, and you don't care? No, I care. I'm, I'm glad you told me how much you love me. And I called my astrologist today, and she says the wedding has to be Friday, that that's the perfect date for us to exchange our vows. So what's the problem? Cruz and Eden, that nauseatingly perfect couple, are getting married on the same day. And no one wants to come to our wedding. Oh, come on, doll face. Come on, it's not the end of the world. We'll just get married next week. No. I don't want to go against the planets. It has to be Friday. The wedding has to be on Friday. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure the Capwells don't ruin it. Do you smell the jasmine? Yeah. Where did it come from? I guess the breeze blew it in the window. That sound isn't coming from inside the window. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. 